Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and an absolutely spectacular sounding puzzle uh, today. Uh, it's called Loop Limit and it's by Dorlier and Marty Sears. And this is, well, it's an extension of the rule set that I can't remember if it was Marty or Dior. I think it was Marty who came up with it with these circles in the grid, which had to contain um, the number of times that that digit appeared in a circle, so it's sort of self-referencing. Well, here, if, if a digit appears on a loop that we have to draw, that loop must contain that digit that number of times. So if there was a seven on the loop, there would have to be seven sevens on that loop. It sounds absolutely brilliant. Um, it's got a 96% approval rating on Logic Masters Germany and four stars out of five for difficulty. Um, but the tester who was absolutely insistent um, that we try this said it was criminally underrated at 96%. So it does sound like it's gonna be brilliant fun. And I will read you the rules properly in a moment or two's time. Just, just wanted to say though, before we kick off today, the last few days on the channel have contained so many weird and wonderful things. If you are a, if you do enjoy what we do, there are, there are some things to check out that you should definitely look at. People seem to be liking, which is the surprise to me, my reaction video from yesterday, where I listened to this incredible song called Hi Ren uh, by the artist Ren, um, which I mean, it, it's an amazing, amazing, it's an amazing experience to just watch that video. So I recommend that to you all. Um, but you can watch me watching that video, if you see what I mean, which apparently is a thing now on the internet. Um, but uh, yeah, it's quite a moving piece of music and I, I do recommend it to you. And then we had Ren Day as a result of that yesterday where we, we've got this free Sudoku pack. So if you haven't checked that out, you must. The two puzzles we did from that pack yesterday are spectacularly good. And then the day before that, we, we published what I consider to be one of the most brilliant mathematical or maths-based puzzles we've ever seen on the channel. This one, Difference of Squares by MathGuy underscore 12. If you have a love of mathematics, um, you must try this puzzle. It is so utterly brilliant. I've, I've dreamt about this puzzle since I solved it. It is, I mean, this deserves so much attention, I cannot tell you. So please, please have a look at that. Um, I think you'll like it. Um, what else do I need to tell you about, the, about what's going on? There's loads of stuff going on. We've got our trick or treat Sudoku hunt running on Patreon, um, which, which so many of you have been trying. And don't forget, there is there are, there is now a way to find the the extra eleven puzzles in that pack, which are hidden. You don't have to solve them; they're just there for fun. Um, but but there's a video on Patreon now from Rock Rat Zero, where everything is explained and how to find the extra puzzles um, is revealed. So so do have a look at that, even if you've finished the base set of puzzles already. Um, and then I've got a few shout outs to do today. Uh, I'll start with Mackenzie over there in Texas. Uh, Mackenzie is at the University of North Texas, which apparently is in Denton. And um, well, I just wanted to say thank you, Mackenzie, for your email, because um, we like getting emails like that. We really do appreciate them. So that was all I wanted to say. Um, now, I also need to congratulate Carolyn and Michael, who's wedding day it is today. Many, many congratulations. Apparently the two of you often watch Cracking the Cryptic um, and you've been together for 3,020 days over there in Pennsylvania. <laughs> That's a very precise number of days. Well done for working that out. And your, your wedding cake, well, it's an almond pound cake with cream cheese icing. I Mm, am I approving of that? Well, it's your wedding cake, so I can understand it not being chocolate, I suppose. Anyway, we hope you have an absolutely brilliant day, obviously, which I'm sure you will have. Uh, next, a happy birthday to Ilana, who has turned 17 today. And I know this because Matt wrote to us. Um, and Matt, Matt wrote the most lovely email about you, Ilana, who he describes as his bonus daughter. Um, and apparently you watch the channel together and Ilana often points out my mistakes. Well, I think you all do that, don't you? Um, but anyway, happy birthday for today. I, I Apparently you did want me to do a killer Sudoku variant. Can we think of any, I'm not sure this is really any, um, there could be a bit of maths in this maybe, 
but it's not really a killer Sudoku variant, so I'm sorry. I will try and find a killer Sudoku variant soon. Um, Laura, happy 23rd birthday today. You're doing a maths PhD and having a Colin the Caterpillar cake uh, to celebrate. I'm, I do like Colin the Caterpillar cake, actually. It is, it is, it's, it's part of growing up, isn't it, to have several Colin the Caterpillar cakes. Um, but Laura, good luck with the maths PhD and happy 23rd. Next, over there in Sweden, it's Lena's birthday. And I know this because Lena, your husband, Martin, wrote to us um, and basically insisted that Lena was responsible for at least half our views. Lena, thank you very much. I wish there were more of you in the world. Um, and next, Mark. Mark down there in Australia. Um, I think it's your birthday tomorrow. So, well, now for you, obviously. But by the time this video goes live, it will be tomorrow. Um, and you've turned 66, and I know this because your son Nick wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out. So happy birthday, Mark, and thank you very much for all your support. Um, and that's all the news, I think. Just, oh, remember, Line Sudoku. I meant, to, I meant to be mentioning that, and I keep forgetting. Line Sudoku, it's out, our new app on all platforms. Well worth checking out. Right, now I get to solve some Sudoku. Let's have a look at Loop Limit by Dorlier who is a maths professor, and Marty Sears, who is a genius. These are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. And then we have to draw a loop, one cell wide, of orthogonally connected cells, which does not touch itself, not even diagonally. So we've got to draw a loop. So the, oh, hang on, I managed to mess that up, didn't I? So that could be a loop. What does it mean by not touch itself diagonally? Well, let's try and um, let's try and work out how that could work. Well, actually, let's just start again in order to do that. So it couldn't. We what we couldn't do is something like uh, that. Although that does have the illusion of being a loop, well, it is a loop of tie. You can see that these two cells do touch one another diagonally. And that's not going to be allowed in this puzzle, so we mustn't do that. Um, each digit on the loop indicates exactly how many times that digit appears on the loop. E.g., if there's a five on the loop, it means there are five fives on the loop. Uh, that's such a fascinating rule. <laughs> it's, it's, it's bonkers. The loop must pass through. Oh, the loop must pass through the bulb of every thermometer. So we've got little thermometers in this grid. I don't know why they're little, but they are. Um, and the, basically, we're being told some of the loop cells straight away. All of those cells have to be on the loop. Um, digits along a thermometer increase from the bulb end. So imagine this square was a 2. This square would have to be higher than 2. So just as mercury rises, as the temperature rises, so would the digits have to rise as we move upwards and away from the bulb of our th Sudoku thermometer. And digits separated by a white dot are consecutive. So imagine this square was a 2. This square would either have to be 1 or 3 in order to be consecutive with 2. And that's how white dots work. I think that's all the rules. Scrolling up and down to see if there's anything more revealed. No, I think that's all. So do have a go. The way to play, as usual, is to click the link under the video. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I'm starting by labelling all of the... Um, all of the bulbs of thermometers um, loop cells. Now, probably, we're probably only going to need two colors for shading, aren't we? We're going to have to shade our loop. So we'll make our loop orange. Oh, I don't actually like that. Blue. I'll make, I'll make the loop blue, and I'll make the non-loop cells orange, So because I think that those are the two most colorblind friendly um, digits in our palette or colors in our palette I should say now this is a corner of the loop isn't it so we can immediately make those blue we can immediately make these blue something going on here but let's just finish off the corners look there's another corner there um, these cells are sort of the the central or the inner digits of this two by two they all have to not be loop because if they were loop the loop would immediately be touching itself and it's not allowed to do that. Oh I, see, oh, I see. Right. So that means we can extend. Sorry, I should have seen this immediately. We can extend all of these 
uh, loop cell slightly further out. Now, ah, this square cannot be loop because then the loop would be touching itself diagonally before it's made a visit to all of these other cells it's meant to get to. So that's got to be orange, which means that's got to be blue. Uh, ah, well that's got to be orange, because otherwise I don't know what you'd describe this as, but it's not a loop, it's sort of a branching loop, and that's that sounds like it's naughty, doesn't it? So those two have to be loop, that's not loop. Uh, we could just join up there, I suppose. What about this square? Do we know what that square is doing? Don't know. It's a bit weird. We're given the in the other three corners, we were given the corners, but this one, it it's like we've we've not been given the corner. It makes me think this is probably not loop, but can't immediately see why not. That's got to come through that gap. What's the problem? We don't know, do we? Until we, un until we understand approximately what digits are on the loop. Oh, look, that can't be on the loop. Because that's, again, that's going to create a branching. So that's not on the loop. So the loop turns here and then goes up. And then it must take this cell. Otherwise, the loop has touched itself. So that's got to be blue, which means that's got to be blue. Ah, so the left side is quite good now, and we've almost got a whole column on the loop. And there's loads of cells we can now rule out from being loop because the loop can't touch a diagon itself at a diagonal pos position. So all of these squares are not loop. Uh, hang on, let me think about this. I'm not seeing immediately what to do here. If that joins up, if that joins up, all of those are off the loop. Uh, if it doesn't join up, if that's orange, the loop has to bend, but then it could bend. I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, these two have to meet each other quite soon, either like that or like that because this is going to take that square and this can't get away from from the, where, wherever this bends this is going to hit it before it could sort of escape and go over here um, oh no I'm not seeing anything here so it's probably now right so what do we have to do with the digits on the loop so this column I think is where we probably look now because what we actually know at this point of the puzzle is that there is a minimum, or there are a minimum, of 36 cells on this loop. That must be right, mustn't it? And the way I'm doing that is I'm using the secret. Now the secret is something I only tell my very favourite people, but if you're still watching this video, you're definitely one of my favourite people. The secret is that is that I know what this column of digits sums to in any Sudoku um, because it's going to be the digits 1 to 9 once each and if you add up the digits 1 to 9 you get 45 so the maximum I could make this digit would be a 9 so if I put 9 in here then we know that in this column the other cells would add up to 36 45 minus 9 and that would mean, for example, there would be an 8 on the loop. Now, if there's an 8 on the loop, there are 8 8s on the loop. So, there would have to be 8 cells, if you like, 8 loop cells hypothecated for the digit 8. There would have to be 7 7s on the loop, so there would have to be 7 loop cells hypothecated for a 7, etc, etc. So, in other words... The triangular number for 8, which is 36, 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5, would be, would it be the, it would have to actually be the length of the loop though, wouldn't it? I, we couldn't, there's, yeah, there's no way of specifying a different, so, so it's not just that there's at least 36 cells on the loop, there are in fact exactly 36 cells on the loop. Because for there to be more than 36 cells on the loop, you would have to include a 9 on the loop. Because the, 
because you can't include more than eight eights on the loop or there shouldn't be an eight on the loop in column one and the moment there's a nine on the loop there's nine nines on the loop oh this is weird right so in fact this column is going to specify exactly how many digits there are on the loop depending on what this digit is right now what does that mean I suppose what we could do is to add up the number of digits that we've definitely got on the loop already, couldn't we? Because that might provide us with some sort of flaw on this value. So let's just do that. We've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. The problem with this is it depends how the loop closes. Let's work out the minimum. So if the minimum would be something like that wouldn't it so if all of those let's just make those squares purple so that is the that is the least number of cells that we could put on the loop and what does that what's that going to be then 8 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 30, 30, ah, oh, I don't believe it, <laughs> it's 36, does that mean it, it's going to be a 9 here, oh yeah, okay, so if that, if that was a 9, oh hang on, am I being dense here, I am being dense, There can't be a mismatch between this row and this column, can there? Am I going crazy? So what I'm thinking now is, if this if this is blue, then then we know there are 45 cells on the loop. But if there are 45 cells on the loop, ah oh no, now I'm confused myself. That feels wrong. I feel like that's a, that's exactly negating what I've just said. Because this digit... I mean, let's imagine that was a 7. Just bear with me. I know I'm being a bit dense about this at the moment, but I just want to think about this. If this is a 7, what are we then saying? We're saying that this column implies there are 9 9s on the loop, 9 8 8s on the loop, etc. So there would have to be 38 loop cells minimum, but there can't be more than 38 cells because then I'd have to include a 7. Or I'd have to include more, I'd have to include more than one 1, for example, because there'll be a 1 in this column. If this is a 7, there'll be a 1 in this column, which is saying there's one 1 on the loop. So I can't put more than one one on the loop. Yeah, I don't I don't see how this can be this can be blue. I think that's because that's implying there are 45 cells on the loop, but this is definitely saying that's not true. So I think this is orange, and I think those two digits are the same. Let me just think about that. Is there anything else that we could, that I'm meant to be appreciating about this now? I don't know, is there some reason these can be, these are forced to be some particular digit? Ah. Ah, so these these are not these are not nine now. Oh, this is weird. Yeah, because 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 I've put by putting yeah when when I did my count, I got to thirty six blue cells. But that was making this blue. 
and making that blue and closing this and it was it was being as efficient as I could about closing the loop. The moment I decide this is orange, the loop has to bend. So rather than taking one cell here, it's now taking three cells to achieve the, the next most minimum closure, which takes the total for the blue cells now to a minimum of 38, which means there must be a nine on the loop. Because if this was a nine, the maximum number of cells in the column is 36. which would imply there could, which we know now is not possible. So there is, there is a nine on the loop in this column and this row could be in the, oh no, it can't, no, it can't be in the corner because the corner is a bulb of the thermometer. That would have to be a 10 and 11. So that means that nine nines are on the loop, which means that, don't know what that means. Those two are definitely blue. There are nine nines on the loop. And we've said that we also said we were at 36 and we went to 38, didn't we? As the minimum number of blue cells, which implies there must be eight eights on the loop, because if this was an eight, then the maximum, well, this column would add up to 37. And that's not going to work because we know there are at least 38 loop cells. So we, we know there are nine nines on the loop and eight eighths on the loop. Now, What do we do with that knowledge? I don't know is the short answer. We could. Oh, sorry, I'm being slow. I know I know I'm being slow. My brain is just not telling me how to do this. Uh, right. That square is not loop because otherwise the loop's bending on it on itself. Nine, there are nine nines on the loop. So yes, okay, so maybe this is where we go now. So where is the nine in this box? It must be on the loop, so it's on a blue cell and it can't be in the bulb of the thermometer or the thermometer tip would contain at least a 10. So there is a nine in one of these squares. Now this, this one, well, that's fine. That's fine. There's a nine in one of those four cells. It can't be here. Again, this would be 10 on the thermometer. So the nine, ah, no. <laughs> oh, well, the nine's in one of three places, depending on whether this can be blue. Ah. Yeah, the problem is everywhere else, the, the loop is too, well, maybe this box we could do better. Um, that cell that cell, that cell, possibly that cell. Uh, no, okay, so that's actually, that's not going nearly as far as we need it to. I was, I was suddenly wondering about nine in this column, but no, that's got several options as well. Well, not several, but some. We know that can't be nine because that would prevent us from having a nine. The, the nine in column nine couldn't be on the loop then. And there wouldn't be nine nines on the loop, which there must be. So, and I know these two digits are the same. And they are counting. So if these were seven, then there are 38 loop cells and there would be is that saying there's no sevens on the loop it is isn't it that's saying there's no sevens on the loop so there is there is one digit that is not on the loop So 
that right? This is still playing with my head. I'm still quite uncomfortable with this logic. I think this is the problem I'm having. Or am I? Oh, I'm now worried I'm wrong. I'm worried I'm wrong here. No, I'm not wrong. I'm still, I'm still, I keep going round in circles. I'm in the same circles of thought. It's driving me mad. I'm not wrong. Because the moment I put any digit on the loop, there must be that number of that digit on the loop. So once I miss out a seven in this row, I can't have. Oh no, hang on, I can. Oh no, 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 no. I think I think all my logic's been wrong. Because what would happen if both of these were seven? Well then everything I've said about the other digits would be correct. There would be thirty eights worth of digits on the loop due to digits that had to be placed on the loop in column one and row row one. But why couldn't there be, let's say that was a seven, just for the sake of argument, then that would be saying there were seven sevens on the loop, but these two sevens wouldn't be on the loop, so that would be okay, wouldn't it? So I could I could have because there are nine sevens in the Sudoku puzzle, so providing every other seven apart from those two was on the loop, it would work. Oh, bother. So, hang on. So, have I been... Am I not justified? I've got to go back. I've got to go back. I'm not sure I trust, trust what I've been doing then. So, let's go back to where... Well, so I decided that that cell was definitely orange. Because if it was blue, then we know that there are 45 loop cells. There can't be more than 45 loop cells. That is definitely true. But if there were 45 loop cells, Yeah, that's what I've got wrong. That's what I've got wrong, isn't it? You can still miss out a digit here, because if that was seven... Oh, wow. You've all been shouting at me, haven't you? I, I don't blame you. I just didn't understand. I'm sorry. I am now starting to understand. So now, that can be seven because this can be 45 because that's saying that there are seven sevens on the loop and all I'm saying there is that that's one of the sevens that's not on the loop so it is a flaw a flaw f l <laughs> f l double o r this column is acting as a flaw on the length of the loop but it's not necessarily specifying the length of the loop I wonder how many comments there are in on the bottom of this video explaining this to me and I've only just realized it so I can't rule out that square from being... Now where does that take us back to then? That takes us back to a world where the minimum length is still 36 because I don't know, I don't now know that this isn't on the loop. Oh, bother. So I'm, I've gone backwards in time and thinking. But that's how, how do we do the puzzle then? So I don't now know. I don't now know that there are nines on the loop. I just know whatever this digit is. Yeah, maybe if I'd thought about it, not in terms of sevens, but ones. Imagine that was a one. No, because then this would be 44, wouldn't it? So that would be saying there's 44. 
loop digits. But if yeah, that but it's still no at least forty four because if that was then blue, that would be saying there's forty five loop digits, and that one is one of the eight ones that's not on the loop, which is fine. Wow, this is this is confusing me. Okay. So how do we do this then? So instead of that then, 30 minutes in, no progress at all. Oh, oh no. Right. Oh right, no. This is right. I've, I've right. I've missed. I've missed something very simple here, which I think I've seen before in in these sorts of puzzles, but I haven't used it very recently. That's not. That is definitely not blue. Because if that was blue, then we're saying the length of the loop is forty-five, aren't we? It can't be more. It just can't be more than forty-five. It just can't be because there's not enough Sudoku digits available. If you put one one on the loop, which is the most number of ones you could put on the loop, because once you put one on the loop, you can only put one one on the loop, etc. Yeah. So, so the maximum length of the loop is 45. But if I make it 45, it can't be 45 because that's an odd number. You, you can't make a loop. Um, you can't make a loop that's orthogonally connected an odd number of cells long. Um, how do we prove that? Uh, it just can't be. <laughs> that's, I know that's a, that's, I almost used a, um, a swear word there. I, uh, I apologize to my, uh, my brain. Um, but you can't do that because as the cell, as we move along the loop, um, it's the wrong bishop's color. Is that the way to think? Yeah. Yeah. Think about, think about the grid. Think about the grid as a chessboard. That's the way to do. That's the way for me to prove this is uh, the, the the loop cannot be an odd odd length. Think about the grid as a chessboard, so it's checkered, checkerboard pa pattern, and think about that square as the the start of the loop. Yeah. Now, the the end cell of the loop, the loop, the the, the cell by which we close the loop. So say the loop starts in this direction. It's going off down here. How does the loop close well it obviously has to close from one of those three cells doesn't it that's going to be its final cell if this is its first cell its final cell is one of those what bishop's color are they on not this one's bishop's color so they that you have to and in order to get onto one of those squares you must have gone an even number of turns along the loop it, or the loop must be an even length um, because it, it only revisits odd, it only revisits its same color, if you like, in odd positions. So, so the loop is never, ever 45 long, and that means that is not on the loop. So that's not on the loop by force of checkerboard patterning, which means these two squares are on the loop, which takes us back into the paradigm where the length, the minimum length of the loop is now 38 again. So we do have all our nines on the loop. And we have all our eights on the loop. No, we don't have all our eights on the loop. We have eight eights. We, we have an eight on the loop, which means we have eight eights on the loop. Ah! <laughs> um, and that means... That means we've got to put... Well, I can't remember what pencil marks are. Oh, no, it's not going to remember it, is it? Because although I have reached the same logical point I'd reached ages ago, I've done it in a different way. So I think if I forward, no, it doesn't remember what I did before. I was thinking, can I? Yeah, because the nines were in those positions, weren't they? The nines in this box, which have to be... Oh, yeah, yeah, we could do that that thing down there. The nine was in one of those positions. So the nine's in one of these three positions. 
Nine can't be there. Nine can't be there. Ah, but we don't know where the loop goes in box two. We don't know where the loop goes. Uh, this is the problem. We don't know enough about the loop everywhere else. How do we do it then? Quick, oh, the other thing we've got to bear in mind is the original logic where I said those two digits are the same is total nonsense. That's not true at all. Um, at least I don't think it is. Actually, now I'm questioning myself. Yeah, I don't think they have to be the same. Because if this was a 2, <laughs> I'm sorry to redo this again, and that was a 3. That's saying there are 3, well, it's saying there are, there's a 2 on this row that's on the loop. So there are two twos on the loop. And there's a 3 in this column that's on the loop. So there are three threes on the loop. And these are just examples of the digits that are not on the loop. So that's I think that's fine. I don't think these have to be the same. How's this been set then? What, what am I missing? I'm missing something meta. Oh, I tell. Ah. Oh. So I know the loop. Hang on. I know the loop is an even number of digits long. Is that what I'm meant to be seeing? Is that telling me something? So it's 44. 42, 40, etc. I don't know, sorry, I'm so slow at this, aren't I? I don't understand, I still don't understand how I'm meant to do it. The only thing I know for sure is there are eight eights on the loop and nine nines on the loop. I am fairly confident about that deduction. But I, I don't think, suppose, I suppose none of those cells can be the nine that's on the loop in this box. Neither can that one be, because none of these can be a tip of a thermo. That can be a nine. Actually, that's quite an interesting thought. Ooh, that's weird. Right, that. Ah, okay. What I was, what I've just been thinking about is how do you, how do we pick up a nine in this box from the loop? I might be wrong about this, but I don't think that this whatever's connecting this to this I don't think it can get a nine in the middle box I might be wrong I this one definitely can't get a nine I can see that because let if we're trying to get this one to pick up a nine in the middle box you can see it can't it can't it just can't get round the edge before touching this diagonally so it's not allowed to it's not allowed to do that because the moment it goes into this square, it must close then very with alacrity. It can't it can't wander off down here because the loop's now touched itself. So that see, there's no way that this thing has a nine a nine in box five, and this one, I think, has the same problem, because to get into box five, I might be wrong about this, but when I've just been playing with it in my mind, I couldn't see how to do it, because obviously we. we Obviously, then we're not going here, are we? So we have to go here and we have to go here. So it looks like we're going to be able to do it now. But the next cell can't be this one or we've touched up the loop has touched itself. So it has to close again. It just doesn't work. So that means that actually. We might be able to get the loop to be longer as a result of that then, because if this is how. Yeah, this this can't get into the middle box without stranding this, can it? So it's got it's got this somehow is coming up here 
to pick up a pick up the nine in this box I think let me just think about that a bit harder this no that gets stranded so this isn't how we get into box five it must be this it, it's it's this segment I think before it hits this but let's just test that out yeah yeah if we're going to try if we go there and then try and get up here and turn we can't do it this is weird so before this gets to this it picks up a nine in box five and therefore that is orange oh okay i'm just my phone's buzzing uh, th th those two are both we, that's not we haven't got it yet so that's got to not be on the loop this has got to be on the loop that's got to be on the loop we can't turn back here or we we're never getting up here are we so we still haven't got into box five so we have to do this And that if we t do that, we're, we're making a second loop. So we definitely don't go there. So definitely we go here. So this is the smallest loop that we've got. So it's something now of this length is the minimum. Let's just, let's just do that. So that means I've got to purplify all of those. Right, so that's the smallest loop we can draw. And the length of that loop is... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 22, and 5 is 27. I don't want to get this wrong. That would be bad, wouldn't it? 27, and 6 more in this row is 33, 37, and 7 more is 44. So it's 44 is the minimum length of the loop. Well, that's the length of the loop then. Ah, this is it. Right, <laughs> I think finally I've understood the puzzle then. So 44 is the minimum length of the loop and the loop cannot be 45 because we worked out that that's an odd number. Um, So there is no there is no latitude. We can't make the loop 45. To make it 45, that has to be blue. The loop is an odd length, which is impossible. So it is exactly 44. Well, doesn't that mean that that has to be a 1? <laughs> Am I going crazy? If it's not a 1, it doesn't work. Because you're not... Yeah, I don't think it works. I'm just <laughs> if this is a two, then this is this row is saying there are forty three forty threes worth of digits on the loop. But we know that there are forty fours worth of digits on the loop altogether. Um Oh gosh, this is doing my head in now. 44's worth of digits on the loop altogether. So can I really? So row one would now be saying effectively there are 43's worth of digits definitely on the loop. How would I increase that number by 1 to 44? So if in this column I made this a 1, this is back to this point about can these numbers be different or must they both be 1? This would, So this column is now saying there are 44s worth of digits on the loop but no that doesn't work does it because now so maybe I'm coming back to the point where I feel these have to be the same again I'm not sure because this column is now saying every digit is on the loop apart from one 
and this row is saying every digit is on the loop apart from two. So that would imply that altogether every digit is on the loop. And if every digit is on the loop, 45 is the number which cannot be correct. Oh, I'm going round in I'm going round in circles on this. I just that 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 feels it feels to me like th that's what I've just said is correct. So this would be every number apart from two. This would then be every number apart from one. So altogether, every digit has appeared on the loop. And if every digit appears on the loop, it is axiomatically 45 long, which it cannot be. So these are the same number and they are both one. Right. And because the loop is, well, I mean, maybe we could have got this a different way because we have worked out that the loop is 44 long for sure, because it cannot be 45 long. And if it's 44 long for sure, we can effectively close it, can't we? Uh, at least, at least, maybe not down there, but those squares all have to be blue for sure. I'm not sure. Um, it looks to me like this can wiggle about. I think that's got three possible ways it can close down here. So we might not know quite how it closes down here. But we do know, we do know a great swathe, a great ocean of blueliness uh, and a great swathe of oranginess. All of those squares are not on the loop. And what does that mean then? So there is only one, no, there is, okay, so yes, okay, so in order to get four, maybe this is the way to think about it, in order to get 44 cells on the loop, every digit is on the loop except one. There cannot be a one on the loop, because if there was a one on the loop, there would have to not be another number on the loop, and what number would that be? You can't miss a two off the loop, because that would get you your loop. To, yeah, I've, I'm messing this up, aren't I? This is much simpler than I'm making it. We've worked out the loop is 44 long. Therefore, there is not a one on the loop. Because if there's a one on the loop, I've got to miss another digit off the loop. Otherwise, there would be 40, it would be 45 long. And if I miss off another digit from the loop that's not a one, the loop can never achieve a 44 total. So maybe that's the way to that's the way I'm proving these numbers are the same. So these are both one. There's no ones on the loop. So so there is a one. Ah, can that be nine? No, that can't be nine now because we know that the loop the loop contains nine nines. In fact, that's going to be the way we go, isn't it? We can we can start to po pencil in that can't be nine. That can't be nine. Look, the nine in box two has got to be in those squares. Ah, got a digit. Well, I've got a digit that's not a one. The nine here has to be there. It's the only place it can be by Sudoku because we need we need to put a nine in this row. But why couldn't that be a nine? Oh, that couldn't be a nine because of the nine pencil marks in columns one and two. These can't be nine. The nine ah, the nine in box eight has to be in one of two positions. So that's not a nine. That's not a nine. Here we go. We can just do the nines. Ah, this might be this might be how we solve the puzzle. That's now forced to be a nine. That's not a nine. Uh, nine in, ooh, I'm not sure, Maverick's just flying past. Nine in this box is in one of these two squares. That makes this square a nine, which makes this square not a nine. And, um, hang on. Let me just get the, I just want to sort the rest of these nines out. So we've got nines, 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 nines. Um, but I'm sure these, I'm sure this is done somehow. I just can't see how to do it. Okay. Um, 
What else do we know? We know no one is on the grid is on the loop. So ones we can start to pencil mark. One has to be in one of those. So there's a one here, isn't there? This this has to be a one two pair, I think. One has to be here. I'm, ch I'm checking everything I'm thinking about because that can't be a one. It's halfway up a thermo. So this can't be a one. So there's a one in one of these, a one in one of these. Ah, this is lovely. That can't be a one because then this would be a two to be consecutive. But that would have to be a one to be less than two on the thermo. And we'd have two ones in the box. So that's not a one. That's a one. That's not a one. Um... What about this box? Where can, well, the one can never go halfway along a thermo. Oh, <laughs> so the one in this box is placed, actually, I think. I'm just going to double check that. Can't be partially along a thermo, can't be on the loop. So that's a one. So that's a one. Ah, oh, this is huge. So that's a one. Ah, no, it's fine. I suddenly thought I was going to have to put the one um, on the thermo in box... Um, or on the loop, sorry, in box in this box. This is a one. Have we got? I think we've got all the ones out of absolutely nowhere. Yes, we have. Okay. So all the ones are on the loop. All the ones, sorry, all the ones are not on the loop. All the nines are on the loop. Most of the eights are on the loop. I don't know whether to go to eights or twos next. Um. Hmm, not sure. If that's a nine, that's an eight. That is interesting, actually. How does that work? Not very well. OK, that's not a nine. Uh, this is a bit more complicated, but if that's a 9, let's, let's put this in. If that's a 9, that's an 8. Now, we know there are 8 8s on the loop. So this is the 8 that's not on the loop. So where do we put the 8 in this box? And the answer is it's quite difficult to put it in this box because it can't go in any of those squares. It can't go on its own thermometer because it wouldn't be bigger than it, if you see what I mean. It can't go here or here because nine can't go on the tip. So it goes there. But then I have got to put an eight in this box on, on the loop and there's nowhere for it to go. It would have to go there, but then that would be a nine. So this, this is quite good. So that's not nine. This is nine, which means this is nine, which means this is nine. Come on. What a puzzle this is. I mean, I'm fairly sure there was a simpler way of understanding the logic between these two squares. I found it very, very circular. I found it really hard to articulate it. I think I got there in the end. You guys will have to be the judge of that. But I found it very difficult. But I do feel now that we're on the right track. So let's see if we can finish this off relatively quickly. So what about... Well, what about twos then? I can only put two twos in on the loop, but there's got to be a two here. There's got to be a two there, but that two could go in the corner, couldn't it? Well, hmm. No, this is fine. Oh, wow. OK, where do the twos go? Oh, well, yeah, where do the twos go in the perimeter is the question I want to ask. Because I think that that has quite an interesting answer. The two in this row is indisputably on the loop. The two in this column is indisputably on the loop. 
where's the 2 in row 9? Now the only way it's not on the loop is if it's there, but it can't be there because the thermometer would break. This would have to be a zero, this would have to be a negative number. So the two in this row is on the loop. And the same works in this column, because the two can't go in either of these two positions, which are the third and fourth cell along a thermometer. So the two in this column is on the loop. But so now if we don't put twos in the corner of this puzzle, if we if we say plonk them around. In, 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 in general perimeter cells, like those, we've got four twos on the loop, which we're not allowed. We're only allowed to have two twos on the loop. So the only way we can do this is if we put them in the corners, like there. That, that would meet the criteria. And in fact, that is, the, that is the way that the twos are disposed, because the only other way of putting four twos into the, or putting two twos in the perimeter to meet those four, you know, so it's such that we have a two in row one, row nine, column one, column nine, would be to put them in those two squares, which and we can't put a two here because of the thermometer. So the twos have to go in those squares. And those are the only twos on the loop. And that means that the two in this box is in one of those squares. And that's a two, I think. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm get, it's, I'm still finding this confusing. There's a two in one of those squares. There's a two in one of these squares. We can't put any other twos on this loop. It's as simple as that, or as complicated as that, if you prefer. There's a two in one of those squares. Oh, please, please don't stop now. Can, ah, that can't be a two. Yes, here we go. Where does the two go in box nine? And even though I don't know where the loop goes, there are still certain cells that simply can't be. On the, that's a loop cell, so that's not allowed to be a two. That can't be a two because we need a one on the bulb. So the two is in one of those squares and that places the two in box eight, which places the two up here. So how many twos have we got? We've got six twos. Ah, we've got this horrible, that's a sort of common pattern in Sudoku which is probably not going to be unwound because, you know, you can't... There are different configurations here that can work. Okay, let's think about threes then. So threes... How many threes can we put in this perimeter? Or do we... Let's put that... Let's express that differently. How many threes do we have to put in the perimeter of the grid? And do we reach a count of three? Or not. Well the 3 in this column is clearly on the loop. The 3 in this row is clearly on the loop. The 3 in this column. No, you can't put 3 in either of those squares because even though that could in theory be a 3 that would make this a 1 and that breaks. So the three in this column is on the loop. So now we're up to three, three. So I can't put the three in this row on the loop unless I put a three in the corner, <laughs> which, which would be fantastic. Um, yeah, well, the, yeah, sorry, the three in that row is obviously on the loop. It's easier than this column. It can't go there. So in the perimeter, I seem to be trying to t put four threes in the perimeter of the puzzle, which I can't do because I'm only allowed to put three threes on the loop. So I have to put a, loop, a three in the corner and that three cannot be there because this would be a one. So that's a three in the corner. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, now, okay, so now there's a three in this column, which is on the loop which is not in these squares, so it is... Oh, it could be there, could it? Yeah, it could. Could it be... It could be there. I don't think it can be here, because this would need to be a 1 or a 2, which it doesn't seem to be able to be. So it's, it's either here, here, 
but it's, it's in one of those two positions in this column don't really like pencil marking across boxes so i use a little purple flash for that what about in this row where's the three could that be a three yes i think so is my first reaction anyway could that oh look there's loads of places okay maybe not those two places though those three places bobbins okay but that's all right but that's still interesting because one two three is all the threes that can be on the loop so in every other box we're not allowed to put three on the loop right so there's a three in one of those squares there's a three in one of these squares ah yeah. oh, no we can't say there's a three here because this could be the three bother <laughs> uh no oh this is well this yeah this this is where we need to look where's three in this box can't be on the loop and doesn't seem to be a purplifiable square so three is here which is on a white dot and that must be with a four because it can't be with a two so oh, i thought we were going to know the order of that but i'm not sure we do actually um ah okay so th from a pure sudoku perspective now this square is at least a five six seven okay so six seven works but that could be a six seven eight but it can't be any bigger than that because the nine is not available for the tip of the thermo so that's quite restricted um right let me think about this a bit more then so now well now here's an interesting thought yeah i know i know don't ever speak to me at parties <laughs> but the fours in this puzzle now as well i think are restricted by which i mean that the fours we can see very clearly now have to be in row one on the loop in column nine on the loop in row nine on the loop And in column one on the loop i'm just i was just checking that as i went i think everything i just said was true though there are restrictions i mean that, that can't be a four so the four is very restricted in column one um but that means that ah does it that's that's well it, it's true it is true but is it helpful <laughs> because you know i can't really do much with this box because the four could be in the perimeter in this box. I suppose it tells us the four in column in box five has to be in one of those squares. And this is not going to go from here. From here on, I'm very recalcitrant about using that logic much further. Because five, for example, yeah, I can say five has to appear in the perimeter once in once in every box. Or what, what you know, once in this row, once in this column, once here, and once here. But there's then a floating five that doesn't have to be in the perimeter. So I can't even pencil mark the five in this box, I don't think, unless I've missed understood something. So what do we know? We know nines, we know ones, we sort of know twos, we've threes and fours we sort of know about. Eights we don't well eights we do know a bit about. Eights have to be mostly mostly on the loop but not necessarily well there's one there's one eight that's not on the loop and we work do we work out that couldn't be an eight didn't we that couldn't be a nine because i thought i thought that couldn't be an eight because if that was an eight what happened if that was an eight yeah so it, yes okay here's a thought if eight is on the loop in this box it is true to say it's not in either of those positions so it's there and then you can't put eight on the loop in this box this is the same problem we were having before 
So if 8, if 8 is on the loop here, it's not on the loop there. And the only other situation is that 8 is not on the loop there. In which case, yes, so one of, one of these two boxes doesn't have an 8 on the loop, is what I want to say. Now that might be wrong. I'm, I'm feeling very disconcerted by this puzzle. I find it very confusing, but I think that's, that feels right. If 8 is on the loop here, it can't be there, that would be a 9. It can't be there, that would be a 9. So it would be here. And now you can't put an 8 there, because that would be a 9. And if 8 is not on the loop there, then it must be in, on the loop in every other box. So we can we can do some logic here. We can look at every other box and put 8 on the loop in every other box. Now, I appreciate that might not be as good as we were hoping, but let's just see. So 8 is on the loop in this box. So 8. Oh, I don't believe it. 8's in one of two places in box, um, this box. Eight, oh, we'll get that one. That's useful. I'm just going to, I'm not even sure about that now. <laughs> that feels right. That feels right. So that's 8, which means that's 7, because it can't be 9. So maybe we think about 7 in that box in a minute. Um, but let me think about other things first. No. I'm, go I'm going to come straight back there, actually. Because now where is 8 in this box? That's quite a good question. It can't go there, because that would be a 9. It can't. So if it, if it is on the loop in box 3, it's there. But it can't be there. Because this square can be neither 7 nor 9. <laughs> That's absolutely beautiful. This puzzle is sick. It is so clever. It is such a clever puzzle. And But now... Now, the 8 in this box cannot be on the loop. And more than that, we, so that means it's in one of those two positions. But if it was here, again, this would be a 7 or a 9, which it still can't be. So 8 is exactly there. But more importantly, we now know the 8 in this box is on the loop, which it can't be there or there. So it's there. Um, so it's there. Ah, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. nearly. Eight's in one of two positions now in box one. We might be able to improve on things though. Eight, oh yeah, look, where's eight in box eight? It's got to be just underneath the nine or we're going to have a problem with trying to find an integer that's between eight and nine that can go on the on the thermometer. Um, oh, where's, well, yeah, here's a good question. Where's eight in this box? Definitely can't be there because this is definitely lower than eight. So eight goes here. How many eights have we got now? We've got, we have got quite a few. Where's eight in here? Eight can't go there. Eight's got to go there on the thermo. Ah, this is brilliant. It's just brilliant. So now this row looks very restricted. Five, sixes and sevens are all we've got left to place. Hmm, that didn't really work actually. Um, Maybe it's sevens we're meant to think about now, actually. Yeah, because we've got to put we've got to put seven sevens on the loop, and we've got one seven already not on the loop. Where else? Where else in this puzzle can you not put a seven? Especially, I mean, where we need to find, we need to find loop cells where you can't put a seven. Like, I mean, that can't be a seven, for example, because that would need to be eight or nine. This column is so nearly the one, isn't it? That, but that can be a seven. Botheration. Seven. Ah, all right, column five. Where's the seven in column five? That is a good question at last. That is a good question, because it can't go there. 
because this would need to be an integer between seven and eight and there is no such thing. So it's somewhere in the orange cells. So there are now two Sudoku units we've discovered which cannot contain a seven. This column and this box. So in every other Sudoku unit, the seven in that unit must be on the loop. Which is perfect. Right, so we come straight back to this column. Where is the seven? It's got to be on the loop, so it's got to be there. The seven in this box has to be on the loop and it can't be there because this can't be eight or nine. So that's a seven. Um, okay. Let me think about this now. So now the seven in this box. Seven in this column we know is in one of these squares. So the seven in this box is on the loop and has to be here. So that's a seven. That's a seven. We're getting sevens in bad places in the sense that they're not helpful, but oh well, no, okay, hang on. That's a seven, so that's a six. So that's a five and that's a seven. Now that, this is all going quite well. This square here is not a five. This square here is not a five and it's not a seven. So that's a six, that's a seven. How many sevens have I got? Loads. Yes, seven going there. Hang on, how many sevens have I now got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now something's gone wrong. Something's gone wrong because I haven't put a seven at all now. In No, something's wrong with this. Bother. Don't know what I did wrong there, but something went wrong because I didn't have a seven at all in column seven which is not going to be correctly. Uh, I felt actually when I did, when I put this seven in, I wasn't quite sure. I'm gonna put the seven here. Or did I? Well, by Sudoku, this is definitely a seven. That cannot be a seven, by, again by thermologic. So the seven is in one of these two squares, which means the seven in row one has to be here. So that, that's a seven that we did have before. That's a seven by Sudoku. That's still a six, that's still a five. So some of this is working the same way. I'm worried I've made a, a major boo-boo. Ah, no, okay. So now this could be seven in column five. Well, it has to be, that's the only place it can be. That's a seven now. Now let's double click the sevens. So now they work. So the one I did wrong was this one. I, it's funny, as I did, as I put that in, I felt that the logic I was using to put it there was slightly, yeah, no, what I did, you know what I did? I said there has to be a seven in orange in this column. And so I then, I think I just, I did that or no, I didn't have this in at that point, did I? So I did that. And then I said that that had to be a seven, forgetting that this could be the seven in this box and that would meet the criteria. So that, okay, so I feel better about that in terms of why I ended up where I did. Now, what about, well, that's a five by Sudoku. So this square's a four by Sudoku. Amazing, Sudoku being useful. Come on, come on, Sudoku. You've got more giving to give, I think. I'm going to get rid of those threes and fours. They're annoying me because I don't think they're very useful. <laughs> um, this five is basically the biggest thing it can be, isn't it? So there's two, three, and four here. We know that's not two. What's that digit actually? The only reason I asked that question is that if I'm not mistaken, didn't I say earlier that threes and fours on the loop had to be in the perimeter of the puzzle? I think I did say that. I think that was logical when we did it. So this can't be a three or a four. Well, so what is it? It's only six. 
I see only I think it's a naked single by virtue of nonsenses that have been revolving around the world. Three. Yeah, it's a naked single six. Okay, so these squares are now a three five pair and there's a three in the corner. So that's five, that's three, that's something, six. <laughs> it's good when it's it's in the right place on its thermo, isn't it? That sort of feels like, okay, well, that might be right. One, two, three. These are four, five, and six. We can't put four in the middle. We could, I, was, I got that by saying you can't put four anywhere but on the perimeter on the loop, whereas I could have got it by thermologic had I had any brains. Um, that's, oh, four or five here. This might be the place we have to look now, this white dot. Um, three, four, five, three, four, five. Bother, bother, bother. That can be four because that is on the perimeter. Yeah, okay, the, the even digit that must be on this dot, every consecutive pair of digits must have an even digit, so that's got to have four on it, so that's not four. So there's a four here, a four here, there's a four on this segment here, which means that's not four. Now, what have we got left to put into this column? Three, four, and five. Okay, bother. So that's not five, that's not three. Um. Oh no. <laughs> All right, so we can't do anything with that. So that's three, four, five. That's three, four, five. That one can't be three at least, that's something. So this is four, five, or six. Uh, that can't be four, I suppose, because that's not on the perimeter, and it's... Ah, it can't be five, that's a six, right. So that's not six, so this is six, it's not doing anything, it's not doing enough. Bother. I've got to be very careful about this and try and keep careful track of what we know about the various digits. That can't be five, so that's three or four. <laughs> ah! What about, hmm, I don't know really. This is three, four or five, that's three, four or five. Ah, that's not, oh, that's, that is this one. That's absurd, it's this one. Because that is not on the perimeter, so it cannot be three or four, and it doesn't seem to be able to be anything else but five, therefore. Oh, this is, this is so clever. It's so clever. It's it's so clever. It's making me feel absolutely inept. I have to say, I feel so stupid. I might get through this, but I think it's made me look like an absolute Charlie, frankly. Um, this is, oh, two. Two has to go there now. So two's got to go there. That's lovely. So this, this is five by Sudoku. This is six. This is something. Three. That's four. That's something. Six again. Um, six has to go there. This is four. This is five. This is three. This is four, three, four, five, three, four, three. Well, we haven't done the path, but I think we have maybe done the Sudoku. Um, so let's, how are we going to, how do we do this then? Oh, well, I suppose that can't be on the loop because that's not in the perimeter of the puzzle and it is a three. So that's definitely orange. This is definitely loop. Um, no, no, it can't be that we have to count. Oh, this would be, br this would be so brilliant as a finish if you now have to count the number of fives and sixes you've got on the loop to see if you've got the right number. Let's double click fives, hang on, double click fives. How many fives are on the loop? One, two, three, Four, five. Oh no, there are five. There are five. One, two. We're going to do this slowly. Three, four, five. So if this was on the loop, it would be a sixth five on the loop, thereby rendering the puzzle incorrect. So I think we should find that there are six sixes on the loop now, but there weren't before. So let's see. Double click the sixes. One, two, three. So one, two, three. That's not on, oh, the three central ones are not on the loop. Yeah, there you go. That's amazing. So the final flourish is 
is that you, the loop only gets disambiguated at the very last by counting the fives and the sixes you've already had on the loop. That is so clever. I cannot tell you. I don't know if it's right or not. Let's click tick. Yes. Congratulations. That's all correct. Well, that was, I found that very hard. I have to say, I mean, there's so many brilliant things about it. And yeah, that it's, it's a real head wrecker to me. I, c I can see in hindsight that I should have been able to orange this cell much earlier by checkerboard logic. But, but I'm still fairly sure that until you get 44 as the count, you don't know these two cells are the same. And then once you do get 44 as the count, then I think these have to both be the same. Um, but yeah, you could see I struggled. I'm very sorry. I hope you can forgive me. Let me know in the comments. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. I will be back later. Oh, by the way, by the way, Dorlea and Marty Sears, take the most enormous bow. I'm going to genuflect before you. You're so clever. It's absurd. It's absurd and annoying. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.